Hi, I'm Jeff Leak, and I'm here with Roger Pang, and this is uh, the Simply Statistics podcast number two. And so we're actually recording this from my office uh, with a ridiculous setup of an iPhone, another iPhone for sound, and a camera on an I- Apple computer over there. Right, so this there. is our first multiple camera setup. That's right, so be ready for some action shots. Roger will be doing all the splicing. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, a deterministic statistical machine, which is a post I put up about a week or a week and a half ago. Right. And there was a bunch of discussion about it. And so the basic idea was I saw another sort of one of these startups called Statwing right. that did some really cool stuff in terms of data visualization and making it easy to do data analysis. But it almost made it too easy. It was like you could slice and dice the data. You could see how you could slice right. and dice the data however you want. So let me just say actually that uh, so Greg Laughlin, the guy who started yeah. the company, he actually emailed me about this about his software like before okay, it came out yeah. on Y Combinator and uh, I, I said, if you're out there Greg I'm, I'm sorry I, I, but I never emailed you back and I apologize so, um, so we're anyway. already making enemies All but right. I looked at it I did look at it eventually All right. and, uh, and so here we go anyway so anyway it's a really nice site and if you haven't seen Statwing you should go check it out but uh, so so what I thought started thinking about this is uh, you know if you're an amateur uh, that's using this and, and the, there was a TechCrunch post about Statwing that sort of pointed this out that if you're an amateur using this site it makes it really easy to do statistical analysis and for it to tell you all the answers right, to your data yeah. analysis problems. And I felt like that's super dangerous because you'll just, you know, people who don't know what they're doing are going to fiddle around with it every which way right. until they get the answer they want. And so I proposed this idea of a determined statistical machine where you put in a data set and a question you want answered and it does deterministically a set of analyses related to that question and then gives you an answer back. Right. Where everything is deterministic, from error checking to model checking to data analysis to and, and just to be clear, so when you say deterministic, you it's really kind of algorithmic, right? I mean, that's right. There's an algorithm that's in there somewhere. You plop in some data, it goes through the various pinball machines, and out comes an answer. That's right, and I, and the reason why is you know there's this paper that talks about how there's sort of the illusion of progress in machine learning. It's maybe not entirely important what the method you use is, or, or right. not hugely important. It's as long as you do the analysis right and sort of pick the features right, and so and ask the right questions. So maybe you yeah. could algorithm, you know, make that an algorithmic. So then you follow that up with a post on right. the cost so that, of data analysis. So when I read your post, I was kind of thinking, well, you know, one of the reasons it's one of the problems that you know you get you get your data set, and it's really easy to to kind of run Stata or run R or whatever software you've got to like kind of fiddle with the data and kind of get the answer you want. So you do like 100 analyses, you look at 20 million variables, and right. you like, oh, well, this one you know, shows the relationship that I want to see, and so we'll publish that, right? right. So I, figured, you know, I was thinking, well, you can raise the cost of data analysis by saying, okay, well, you know, if, you, if there's a system like Statwing or whatever you're proposing that lets you push the buttons, right. right? Then the price for pushing the button is that, like, you know, we keep track of all the work you've done, right? Right. So, I mean, I was trying to think how you could implement something like this. You could do something like, you know, like a, like a version control system, like Git or something right. like that, where like there's like a hash that just says, okay, this is your analysis history up to date is encoded in this hash. Right. So that way, if you modify the history, we know that it's changed, right? Right. Or, or something like that, you know. So it keeps track of the history, so that the, you can do as many analyses as you want, but everyone's going to know about it. Right, and that was sort of in my in my post about the the determinist, deterministic statistical machine was the same sort of thing. I said every analysis you did would get sort of posted to Figshare, you right. know, right away. It would have a DOI and everything like that. So every, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. it seems like a critical component of both of our things, sort of both of our proposals, is this paper trail of right. everything that's happened. Yeah. And so I called it like a multiple testing paper trail, but that's not quite what it is, right? It's sort of like a I don't know data analysis choices paper trail. Right. Which, as far as I can tell... So we were, you know, next we, to a hospital here, that's right. so... We're you may hear the ambulance yeah. going by. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it seems like that's, that seems like the critical piece, right? The, right. the paper trail or the cost. Right, because the cost there is really more kind of reputational or like scientific. You know, it's not really about money or anything. People, you know, it doesn't cost, relatively speaking, that much money to analyze the data one more time. Right. But if, so if your reputation or the, kind of the quality of the analysis is going to go down because you did 20 analyses instead of 10... Do you yeah. think it would work with money? What if you made people pay a dollar every time they push the button or whatever? Do you think that that would work, or is it gotta no, be because, something that? Well, because no, because I think people always find a way to kind of get a, or to either find the money or right. get a, find a way to make it cheaper. You know, it costs money now. You have to pay a statistician to you know to analyze data or whatever it is. You know, right. they find a way to work that out. But I think if their reputations were you know if the value of the analysis ultimately was discounted because they did twenty different right. you know regressions or whatever. Then I think you know it's like I think that's kind of what would maybe 
I don't know, make people think twice. I don't know. So do you think this ties into uh, sort of like re reproducible research? Because, you know, reproducible research says you're going to have a, a document that shows exactly the analysis you published. Right. But it doesn't show all the analyses maybe you didn't publish and right. that you did beforehand. So, like, yes. maybe this is a way of well, I think that's taking one of reproducibility the, back a step, right? Well, that's one of the criticisms that I often get uh, about reproducible research, which is that, so what if your final analysis is totally documented? Like, it, it, to it doesn't show all the other variables that you threw out or the models that you didn't right. use, you know? And so, and so, yeah, reproducibility is, is like, it's necessary, but it's, it's far from sufficient, right? Because, like, right. if you want to know, you kind of want to know the whole process, right? right? It's hard to document the whole process, I mean, because that could be, like, a huge, you know, there could be, like, a, a thousand lot things of things. Did, yeah. right? so, so the question is, is, suppose you had the paper trail of everything, right. and it's a thousand things, you know, a thousand things <laughs> yeah. long, you threw out this variable, put this variable in, threw out these outliers, did all yeah. that kind of stuff. Would that be, how could we usefully summarize, you know, everything you did? <laughs> I guess that might be the question that, yeah. you know, might be worth somebody trying to figure out, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, there was some, so your, your post uh, spurred some discussion. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So, I, if I recall correctly, so there was, a, there was kind of a question about, like, okay, well, if you, what are the, you know, the statistical properties of, of an algorithm? Suppose, so in the very basic case, you know, if you took a data set in, filtered out some outliers, and then like ran a t-test or something like that. You know, right. is that the same as running a t-test, you know, for example, or, or, or right. that, I mean, is that, was that, that was, the that was sort of the question. Yeah. And so I think that, or choosing a parametric versus oh, yeah. non-parametric yeah, test right. yeah. based on the observed data. And right. so it's pretty well known in a very simple case where you just have a, a set of points and then you do some function to those points and then do a test afterwards that right. that the properties of the test are going to be totally changed, wrong. right? right. Yeah. They're going to be either wrong or they're going to be biased one way or the other. Right. But this is sort of even a step further back in the sense that it's not just a set of numbers, right? It's pretty complicated, right? You might put in a data set. Right. It might filter some outliers. Then it might do something else. It may take a transform. Then it might, right. you know, so, I mean, in look some, for fudging or something like that. In it's going to be cases, hard to evaluate what you, So couldn't you use something like a bootstrap procedure to, like, if you wanted uncertainty? If you, right. did, if you just wanted a prediction, right? Right. Then, I don't know, maybe you'd be happy with just the number. Right, with right. cross validation or something. Maybe with like some that. cross validation, yeah. But if you want like a regression coefficient, you're gonna have to bootstrap the whole thing, right? right. Like from the beginning to the end. But so. of course, this is remember this whole system is for people who are not set. I mean, I don't know how complicated the analysis they're gonna do. Right. But if you really want a sophisticated analysis, you probably wouldn't use this system, right? Or so I wonder if you could have the deterministic statistical machine tell you at the end. It's too complicated. Go find a statistician. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. We, you know, have a choke and say, go, go find somebody that knows right. what they're doing. So. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't data set has more than a certain number of rows or something like that, right? Yeah, then it just kicks you out of the system immediately. So yeah. anyway, I don't know. But it seems like an interesting sort of question as to whether you can sort of operationalize the whole thing. Um, yeah. I think in terms of implementation, it's possible. I think, if you, you know, the combination of some statistical analysis software programmed yeah. appropriately and then like a version control system would pretty much, and then and then connections with fixed share and whatever right that would kind of take care of i think 90 percent of it i think all right well so, if statwing and fixed share and all these places want to like get together and help us build the, the machine let us know right sure. if you're out there please let us know because you know we're not good at this at all exactly <laughs> this is not our area so anyway but thanks for tuning in for uh podcast number two and uh let us know what you think and hopefully we'll be back for podcast number three